A study of children weights was conducted in Hong Kong. A sample of 40 children, each 68 inches tall, had a mean weight of 128.9 pounds and a standard deviation of 9.2 pounds. Create a 96% confidence interval for the true mean weight of children that are 68 inches tall in Hong Kong. Okay, so this is an extra word, children, there. It doesn't need to be there. But anyways, it says a Chinese researcher claims that the average child in Hong Kong is underweight. If the cutoff weight for being underweight at 68 inches tall is 122 pounds, does this interval provide any evidence to contradict the claim that children in Hong Kong are underweight? So what we're basically doing here is a confidence interval, right? We know this because it says right here, create a 96% confidence interval for the true mean, right? For the true mean. Okay, it's important that we recognize that phrase because as soon as we do, we know we have to apply the four steps that we did in all confidence intervals in the previous problems. So here is um, the set of four steps. I've written it out for us nice and neat so we have it to work with. Let's start with that. Let's start with the first step, which is to record the information from the problem. So let's get the n, the sample size involved in the study, then the sample mean, the standard deviation, and the confidence level. Okay, so when I go to fill this in, I say that... Uh, a sample of 40 children, each, each 68 inches tall, had a mean weight of. So a sample of 40 children, that 40 is our n, right? That's our sample size. All right, then they tell us that the sample mean, it says they had a mean weight of 128.9 pounds. 128.9 pounds. And then it says a standard deviation of 9.2 pounds. That's 9.2. It's clear that the confidence level is 96%. So let's go ahead and put uh, 0.96 or 96%, however you want to write that is fine. And then of course that leads to the idea that alpha is equal to 0 0.04, right? Alpha is 0 0.04. Now in this instant, this is a confidence level that we could not find on the t-table. You know, the classic values we can find on the t-table are 90, 95, 98, and 99. 96 isn't one of them, so we have to use the old-fashioned z-table to do this problem. When we're doing a z-table problem, what we really want to do is to take the confidence level and divide it in half and look that up on the z-table. So for step two, when we want to find the critical z-value, we're going to take that confidence level, chop it in half, and then look that up on the curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that then. Let's divide that in half and look it up. So what I do is write a little note to ourselves here to say that we're going to look up 0.96 divided by 2. If you work that out, you'll get 0.4800. That's the amount we're going to look up. So look up 0.96 divided by 2 on the Z table. So that's a little note just to tell us or remind us what we did to get the Z value. Now let's go ahead and look at the Z table for a minute. Look up 4800 and figure out the critical Z value that we need for this problem. So now we're looking at 4,800 here to try to find the closest uh, value to that. And then we'll find the corresponding z-score. So let's move the table up till we get something closer. There's 42, 43, 44, so on and so forth, up until we get to this row. Now in this row, I think if we go across, we might be able to find something close to 4,800. Ah, there's 4,798, there's 4,803. 4798 is just a little bit closer than 4803, so we're going to take that value as the closest value to 4800, and that's the z-score 2.05. Okay, so we find the critical z-value to be 2.05. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and calculate the error. And the error is pretty easy once we have these numbers. The z-value here is 2.05. The s is 9.2, and the square root of n is the square root of 40. Okay, so I'm going to work that out now using my calculator. So we'll have 2.05 um, times 9.2 divided by the square root of 40. And we end up with the final answer of 2.982. And then dot, dot, dot. It goes on and on. We're just going to store that, or I'm going to store that in my calculator so I have the full number, and that way we'll round only at the end. Of course, you can just keep a bunch of decimal places to be safe there to avoid any unnecessary rounding. 
Okay, and then the last and final step is to fill in this little expression. Our x bar is 128.9, so we'll use 128.9 minus the error we just found, and then 128.9 plus the error we just found. When we do that, we'll have our answer, our confidence interval. Okay, we'll work that out in a moment, but to, um, to finish, we're going to have to use the wording. So what I would like to do now is to write out the wording generic sentence, and then we'll finish this calculation. So the generic wording is always going to be what? We are blank percent confident that the true blank is between blank and blank. Okay, so for us it's going to be we are 96% confident that the true mean weight, right, for children who are 68 inches tall is between, and now we'll get our numbers and fill them in here. Okay, so we're going to have 128.9 minus the error, and then the same 128.9 plus the error. Okay, and so our answer becomes 125.9 pounds up to 131.9 pounds. Okay, so that's our final result for the problem. We are 96% confident that the true mean is between 125.9 pounds and 131.9 pounds. Now let's try to use that interval to analyze this person's claim here. It says, a Chinese researcher claims that the average child in Hong Kong is underweight. If the cutoff weight for being underweight at 68 inches tall is 122 pounds, does this interval provide any evidence to contradict the claim that children in Hong Kong are underweight? So 122 pounds, if you're under that weight at 68 inches tall, which is 5 foot 8, if you're under 122 pounds, you're considered underweight. If you look at this number, which is 125, that's the minimum number in our interval. So we think the mean weight for these kids in Hong Kong is somewhere between 125.9 and 131.9 pounds. And then if you look at this number, 122, it's outside of the interval, right? It's on the outskirts of the interval. So it's clear that these numbers, if the true mean is within this span, no number in this span would be considered underweight, right? Even if it's the lowest number, even if the mean is in fact 125.9 pounds, let's say, even if that's the case, that's still higher than the 122 pound cutoff. So we're going to say that this represents a list of healthy weights where we think the true mean is located. We're 96% confident the true mean is within this interval, and any number in this interval is considered a healthy weight, not underweight. So in this case, again, our interval contradicts this person's claim.